Hello crochet crafters. Today we're making a chicken pot holder. It's 100% cotton. We're using green, red, yellow, and black for the accessories, the eyes, beak, and bow tie. If you have different colors you'd like to use, feel free. I'm using an E4 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. You can use a larger or smaller hook. Just bear in mind that your crochet chicken will be larger or smaller depending on the size of your hook that you're using. So let's get started. I'm making a green chicken. So first thing we're gonna do is cast your yarn onto your crochet hook. To do that, you can easily wrap it around and I hold it with the two fingers. I wrap it around again and I pull it through. Now that is not considered a stitch, as you know. Make sure that it's not too tight or too loose around your crochet hook. And what you're going to do is the first uh, chain that you make is going to be a little bit loose because we're doing a chain two method. If you want to use a magic circle, you can do that as well. So you're going to chain and then you're going to chain again. That's a chain two. And that first chain that you created, which is very loose, you're going to do six single crochets into that chain. So I'm going to do one and two, and three, and I'm gonna work right around the tail right now. We're not gonna worry about the tail for this first row. Four. You see how I'm using my fingers to kind of manipulate the yarn too? If you're new to crocheting, it may take you a little bit of time to learn this, but I guarantee you'll get it. So you should have six single crochets, just like that. And when you're back to the beginning, to that first single crochet that you did, you wanna go into the front and back loop and you're gonna slip stitch. And to slip stitch, you simply pull it through that and then you pull it through the chain and there you have a slip stitch. So what you're going to do now is you're either gonna put a place marker here or you're going to do what I do is I chain one. And the reason I chain one is because it kind of gives me a bump up and shows me where I left off. You don't have to do a chain one, you can just keep working. It's called working in the round, but if you if you wanna do what I do and you don't have place markers, this will help you figure out where you are. Now, if you're making you know certain kind of crafts, this chain one will not work, but for a pot holder, it's fine. The other thing we're gonna do is that when we come back around now, I've got this tail. I'm going to try to work the tail into my stitches, if I can do that. If I can't, I'll work it in with a crochet plastic craft needle. If you feel that that's better for you, you can do that or you can work with me. But what we're going to do now is after we chain one, we're going to go back into the same one and we're going to do two single crochets in that same stitch. And we're going to do two single crochets in all six of those stitches all the way around. So if you want to count, you can also do that, but you're going to do two single crochets and when you get to the end, if you're there before I get there, what you wanna do is you want to go ahead and count and make sure you have 12 stitches. So I've done four. Now here's where I'm gonna get creative. When I go into my stitch, I'm gonna grab my tail and I'm gonna bring my tail around with that stitch. And then I'm gonna grab the other piece if I can. I got it. So I'm just pretending it's one piece even though I've got that tail in there. So I've really worked my tail in well, most of it. And again, going around, you're putting two single crochets into each stitch, working your tail in if you can. If you cannot, 
do not worry about it. And when you get to the end, if you have 12 chains, I mean 12 stitches, pardon me, you can go ahead and slip stitch like I showed you. So I'm at the end of my 12 chains and I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch. There we are with my 12. And while I'm here, I've worked my tail back in so, so that I don't have that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little craft scissor and snip that right off right there so you can see how nice that looks. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work back into the same one that I do a chain um, chain one in. I slip stitched, but I didn't chain one. So if you chain one again, I'm gonna work back into that same stitch and I'm gonna do one single crochet into that. And if you wanna use a space marker, you can, or stitch marker. And in the next one, I'm gonna do two crochets. So the pattern all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker or to where you did your chain one because I have that bump up I can tell that where I need to go but I've been crocheting a long time so if you want to put the place marker there and the pattern's going to be one single crochet and then two in the next one two but I'm going to go all the way around with you so I just did one and then two so that's a single and then in the next one I'm going to put two into the next one and you can see how nice that's starting to look and then i'm going to do one in the next one and then i'm going to do two in the next one and i try to do all my stitches evenly but you could tell one that last stitch was a little bit loose that's why i've got a little bit more give there so it's a single And two doubles. And the yarn is 100% cotton so that it won't burn or have scald marks on it. Because when you use it, if you're actually going to use it as a pot holder for your kitchen, you don't want to use acrylic yarn or, it will sh or wool. Definitely don't use wool. That'll burn. So you definitely want to make sure you use 100%. Now this has what's called four ply, which is the four strands together. Some cottons are only two ply. That's fine if you want to use a two ply, but just bear in mind that your pot holder will be thinner. So I am back around to where I was before with the last two. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch to, into the one where I started. Oops, I got kind of stuck. That is so tight where I slip stitched that it doesn't wanna come through. Okay, so I slip stitched and I'm gonna chain one again. So in this next row, and it's a pattern, it's always as you go around and you're increasing, you're doing a single single, so the next one will be a single stitch into there, a single crochet stitch into the second one, and the third one now will have two crochet stitches. And that's gonna be all the way around. So you're gonna do a single, a single. Again, make sure you're using a stitch marker. And your third one's gonna be two singles. So when you get to the end of this row, you're gonna do the same thing again. You're gonna slip stitch, chain one, and start the next row. And the next row will always be a single, a single, a single, and then you will do two in the last stitch. So you're always going to do, as you increase your round, you're going to increase the number of single stitches and do two stitches in the last one. So again, this is the, you can count from here, one, two, three, we're in the fourth round. So the fourth round will have a single, a single, and then two in the 
here, a single, a single, and then two. Then when you get to five, it will be a single, 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 and then two in the last digit, single, single, single. When you get to six, again, it'll be four singles and then two in the last one. When you get to seven, it will be five singles and two in the last stitch. I hope that's making sense. What you're going to do is you're going to keep building your round so that when you get to a certain point, either 10 or 11 rows. Now, if you have 10 rows, that means you have eight single stitches and then two in the last as you build all the way around, okay? So if you haven't done that, I want you to go ahead and pause me and finish doing 10 rows all the way around. And then it should look something like this. And if it doesn't look something like this and you missed a stitch or it's a little bit flimsier or it's a little bit flatter, no problem. This is not, you know, a test and you can build it any way you want and it, it doesn't really matter. You, there's, there's lots of room for imperfection in crocheting. So don't worry about it. You don't have to be perfect. And what we're going to do now is I'm at 10. So you can count right here from where I started. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10. And, I and when you're at that last stitch on your 10th row or 11, whichever one you feel more comfortable, if you want to build it a little bit bigger, you can even go 12 or 13 or make it smaller. So it's really up to you. But I'm going to slip stitch into that last one. Now I didn't you didn't take, hopefully you didn't cut your yarn off. I didn't tell you not to cut your yarn off, but hopefully you didn't. And what we're going to do from here now is we're going to build the head. So we're going to work back into the stitch that you just slip stitched, and we're going to do a double crochet. So a double is you wrap it over the hook, you put it through with the back and the front loop, you pull it through, there's three on your hook, and you do one, slip it through the first two, and then you slip it through the second two. Mine's a little tight, sometimes cotton squeaks. And then the next one, we're going to put two double crochets. So it's going to be one, and then two, and then two double crochets one and then two and then the next one we're going to do not a single another double crochet so right now you should have four double i mean four crochets you did a double crochet but then you did two double crochets and a double crochet. And what we're going to do is we're going to chain one, chain two, and we're going to flip our work. You see what I did? Hopefully you're on the back of your project now. And when you're on the back of your project, you're going to go through this loop and pull it through like a so that it's tight to the project. And then you're going to make a double crochet from the back of your work. I'm trying this yarn is very very tight. And then you're going to do another double crochet into the next one. And then in the next one, you're going to do two double crochets. So the chicken's head is basically a double crochet where the body is a single crochet. And this is kind of making the head fan out a little bit bigger. And then the next one you're doing, I'm sorry, I went to the next one already, a double crochet. And then the next one you're doing a 
double crochet. Hopefully that you can see that. And then we're going to come down into this one and slip stitch. We're going to turn our chicken. I probably should have slip stitched from the front, but that's okay. I am going to do that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to slip stitch it from the front. Just so that my yarn will be facing the right direction. See how you can see there's four worsted pieces with this. And again, if you want to do two, that's fine. Slip stitch under. I'm having a little bit of problem there. Perfect. Oh, that's good. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back around the head again with more double crochets. So we're going to go back into the stitches all the way around with a double crochet. But as we come to the top of the head, we're going to make two double crochets. The reason that we're doing that and adding stitches is because the head has to expand. And if you just do a single double crochet, well, not a single, but a double crochet only in the stitch, the head won't expand. So right now in the middle, we want to do two double crochets again. Okay. If you can do that. And that squeaky noise is the cotton yarn as we're building this head. So just keep doing the double crochets all the way around your work till you get the, to the end. And you see, I kind of made a boo-boo too. I slip stitched the wrong way. But if you're if you're a crocheter, you can easily compensate for those mistakes that you make. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double crochet into the bottom one. And then I'm going to bring it over a stitch. And I'm going to double crochet into the stitch on the bottom. Because what you're doing is you're you're literally expanding the head out. So hopefully that makes sense. I think I did one too many on the head. Yeah. So what we're going to do, and this is a really important part of the project is you see how this has a different look up here see how it has a different look on the bottom that's because we work on the back of the project all the way around so what you're going to do now is turn your project like I did before and I made a mistake with the slip stitching turn your project put your crochet hook through that loop pull that down so that it brings your head together to the bottom of the, you know, stitch there. And what we're going to do is we're going to work in the round all the way around. And we're going to do a single crochet working back the head this way. And then we're going to work around the body. And that's what gives this, this beautiful chicken that really lovely look. And I'll show you what I mean. So... Start your single crochets all the way around, folks. And then you can really see your head to really starting to take shape because as you do that single crochet, it's pulling those stitches up 
giving that chicken. So single crochet it all the way around, working in the back of your work. And this, this head, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you just increase the number of double crochets you want for your project. So if you want a little bit of a smaller head, you can do that. So you can see as I'm building this, you can see the head, how that looks really nice. So I'm gonna turn, again, you wanna to continue to work around the outside of your project this way. So taking the back and the front loop, you're gonna continue after you finish that head on that side. You're gonna take the back and the front loop. The squeakiness is my cotton yarn against the hook. There are lots of different crochet hooks. I have always used a metal one because that's what I grew up using. There are some with some big gripper handles that are made out of a type of uh, synthetic you know, rubber. And there are also some wood crochet hooks. And there are also some shorter hooks that don't have as long a stem as this one has. So you can pick whichever one works for you. There is no right or wrong answer. And if your chicken looks a little different than mine, and it's a little wider, or it's a little flimsier or it's a little tighter or it curves that's perfectly okay it doesn't have to look just like mine the stitches should be relatively uniform and that's the one thing that you should try to get down if you have not learned how to do a uniform stitch you can see how I hold it with my fingers you can see how I pull the yarn through whoops I'm talking to you, so I'm trying to do a double crochet. Using those single crochet. This is also called, when you're using a single crochet method like this, it's called an amigurumi style. And they use single crochet stitches to make amigurumi everything. And again, I'm just gonna turn this around so you can see the difference in this lovely pot holder, the way versus the other side. So you can see why, why this gives it a nice finished trim working in the back of the project because the stitch is going the opposite way, basically giving it your outer trim. And a lot of the Amigurumi projects will do that. They'll work in the round and then they'll have you turn your work and work this way so that you're giving it that finished trim edge look because the other thing it does is it turns the stitches to the back so that the front looks like it's got that trim work it's just a little trick in crocheting that just defines the chicken now I'm almost all the way around and hopefully you've been able to join me. And the reason I don't tell you what the count is for the stitches is because it doesn't matter. If you have two more than I have, it's not like a piece of clothing. Clothing is different. We have to make sure that one arm is the same size as the other arm. So I'd be a lot more concerned about that. But pot holders? Let's go boho style. Yeah, boho style. 
So here I am, back to my chicken head, doing these single crochets. Hopefully you've done your single crochets all the way around with me. And what I'm going to do to kind of give that head that a little flatter look now is I'm going to grab that edge and I'm going to slip stitch it in. I'm going to show you how I slip stitch it in. So I've made a lot of mistakes myself today. And you know what? I think this head looks a lot bigger than this head. So I'm not real crazy about the way this one came out. I probably should have, uh, because I did more stitches than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, even though I slip stitched, I'm going to go ahead and... Do one more round of singles. And if you like the way your head looks on yours and it matches your the body size that you just did, you can leave what we just did. That's fine. But I'm just going to give the head one more row of singles to kind of make it pop a little bit. Squeaky yarn. And see, I think that kind of makes it really makes it lovely. I like it. I like this chicken head better than some of them I've done. So what you're gonna do is when you get to the bottom of the chicken head, you wanna make sure you slip stitch because you don't wanna bump. And then you're gonna cut your yarn off. And I've got some black yarn and some yellow yarn and some yarn to make the bow tie. But what I'm gonna do is this has already been a very long tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how my chicken looks. It looks really awesome. I like the way it came out. And I'm going to go ahead and work this back in with a crochet plastic needle. And I'm gonna meet you in the next series where I'm gonna show you how to put the elements together and make a bow tie and the eyes and the beak. So please join me at lauriehandywork.com and like my YouTube channel. Thank you.